Do you think it's going to go well with the Jews in the United States or anywhere else in the world? When they're trying to pass even Sharia law in the United States? I mean, come on, wake up! You know, people need to wake up what's going on. My brothers in Israel, you need to wake up! I bring you greetings from Jerusalem. The eternal, undivided capital of Israel and the Jewish people. Erev Tov Kharim. This is Stephen ben Danun with Israel Live. The clip that you just watched just before coming on the air here was taken right from what's playing in the background, the speech that Benjamin Netanyahu gave at APEC that has really stirred up a lot of emotions. In fact, we have an unconfirmed report that Benjamin Netanyahu is uh, al aligned himself with some chief uh, or, or head rabbis over in Israel, and there is discussion that they're going to not give certain lands over to the Vatican that they have been requesting. Uh, and, uh, but we are not able to confirm that as of yet. But notice the statement that Netanyahu, Prime Minister Netanyahu said here at the APEC meeting that he was there to, uh, to let the people know that Jerusalem was still the undivided capital of the Jewish people. I applaud our Prime Minister for making such a bold assertion and God bless him for that, that statement there. And I, and I, from what I understand, he is under tremendous political pressure uh, by uh, the United States and other countries around the world to divide Israel, to make two states, and that pressure is just mounting daily. Um, as a result of this, so uh, one thing that I'd like to mention, in fact, the Reuters news statement there actually caused a whirlwind of issues, and one of those was... Uh, even from uh, the Fatah's uh, report in Arut Shiva, Fatah Net Netanyahu's speech announces end to the talks was the headlines that was published uh, on the 2nd of Adar, and, uh, which would have been on the 3rd of uh, March. Uh, let me just read to you a little bit of the headlines that were written in this article here. As Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu spoke at the APEX 2014 policy conference in Washington, D.C., Palestinian Authority uh, Chairman Mahmoud Abbas, Fatah's party, lost no time in calling the speech an official announcement of an, of an un, uh, unilateral end to negotiations. Nabi uh, Shatah, a member of Fatah's Central Committee and senior official in the terror group Palestinian Liberation Organization, told AFP that Netanyahu statements uh, contravene all the rules of peace negotiations agreed with the Americans. Those statements included a call on Abbas to recognize the Jewish state. How can that be a problem? You want your own state, but you don't want to recognize uh, Israel as a Jewish state. Unbelievable. A recognition he has refused repeatedly. Shatah said the demand for recognition was totally rejected. And, and, and they expect peace. Uh, Shatah took issue with the statement uh, as the Palestinian Authority has demanded Israel let the descendants of Arabs who left the state at its founding to return to Israel, thereby effectively destroying the Jewish state demographically. That would just cause a massive flood, an influx of Palestinians into the, into a, a, the Jewish state that would just become a 10-minute ride from one side of the border to the other side. In fact, there was something Niftali uh, Benet, the housing minister, made the comment about if they get what they're wanting, we'll have about a 10-minute ride to go from the Mediterranean over to the border where the Palestinians are. It's, it's deplorable. Uh, Shatah also admitted last November that the uh, Palestinian Authority was only remaining in the peace talks to secure the release of more terrorist prisoners as part of the Israeli gesture to further the negotiations. So what is this all about anyway? Well, it comes down to one simple fact, and that is... This peace negotiation has nothing to do with the Palestinians. It's between Israel and the Vatican. And it's what the Vatican wants, not what Israel wants. 
And further news, let me bring to your attention as well, going back to the Ukrainian crisis. In fact, that kind of overshadowed the meeting with uh, Barack Obama and Benjamin, uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, the tensions that are going on in the Ukraine, as I reported to you the other day, that is a Vatican involvement. Uh, more so, I should say, that is a Jesuit involvement. Uh, speaking with a source from the Ukraine, uh, Privately, we spoke about this, and one of the things I wanted to play for you uh, is a clip that we discovered where you see unarmed Ukrainians moving forward, advancing forward, holding little metal shields up, and one after another are being picked off, supposedly by the Russian troops, and killed and be drug away. I could not, for the life of me, understand why the Ukrainian people watching their friends killed and still would advance forward. Now, there again, it's alleged that these are the Russian soldiers taking them out, snipers. But who really knows who the sniper is that's taking these people out? So I talked to the source, uh, the anonymous source that I have from the U Ukraine, and he said the protesters are paid. He said this is the only reason why they would continue to go up to the front lines. He said the thing is that you do not understand is that these protesters are paid to do what they do. And in an economic situation that is depressed as Ukraine is, any kind of money you can make is worth the risk that it takes. And so therefore, that is why they do it. Moving on to other news, the meeting there at the White House, uh, some interesting things here. Of course, we know that Netanyahu, when he, when he landed, Barack Obama had already been blasting the Prime Minister, saying that he wasn't doing enough uh, to secure the peace process and to keep it af af afloat. And he urged Netanyahu to make tough decisions to help salvage the faltering U.S. broker peace process amid, uh, uh, aimed at reaching a framework agreement with the Palestinian and extended talks beyond an April target date for an elusive final accord that was reported by Reuters News uh, in an article called it White House Israel's Netanyahu pushes back against Obama's diplomacy. Uh, Arut Shiva also had, had reported on the uh, 3rd of March, Iran calls Obama's military option joke of the year. And this was where, because of this meeting here, uh, President Barack Obama, when they talked about the nuclear threat that was posed by Iran, uh, the president made the comment that uh, there, the that the uh, the a military action is not off the table yet. And the and Arut Sheva was reported there by Dalit Halavi uh, and Ari Yashar. They reported in an article they wrote, General Saeed Masud uh, Masud uh, Jazari. Aid of uh, Basai, he's a local Islamist uh, militia, affairs and general headquarters defense pu uh, publicity and the Iranian military laughed at Obama's recent warnings of possible American military intervention in the Middle East. Uh, the low IQ U.S. president and his country's secretary of state John Kerry speak on the effectiveness of the U.S. options on the table, quote unquote, on Iran, while the phrase is mocked and has become a joke among the Iranian nation, especially the children, said Jazari, according to the Iranian semi-official affairs news agency. The general added on previous Iran, uh, Iranian threats, warning that U.S. forces in the region can be struck by Iran if they err. The region will be turned into a hell for them, threatened Jazari. Jazari claimed that the U.S. public doubts about, uh, excuse me, about Obama's military threats as well. Indeed, last Sunday, Senator John McCain, the Republican of Arizona, a senator, slammed Obama for being the most naive president in history. Even our nation being divided, the world sees it. Anyway, I trust this has been a blessing for you, and good evening. That's it for this evening, and we hope to see you tomorrow again at 7 p.m. Eastern Time right here on Israel Live.